Hey guys! Today I'm working on a puppy in pastel pencils on pastel mat. I'm really loving how this little cutie came out. So today I'm using a brown toned pastel mat paper. It's about 12 by 16. Um, as far as pencils go, I'm using a combination of everything that I have, mostly Carbothellos, but also with some Faber Castell Pit pencils, Derwent pastel pencils, and Kohinoor Jacondas. The Carbothellos are by far my favorite pencil, and they're a nice medium softness. The Pit pencils I use more for details since they're a little harder, and they're easier to get into a sharper point. The Jacondas feel slightly softer to me and mix well with Carbothellos. Derwents I find a little scratchy, but they have some nice colors that the other ranges don't have. Portrait, either a person or an animal, I like to start with the eyes. They often have some of the darkest values in the pupil, so it helps you gauge your values for the rest of the drawing if you get those in first. I'm using a combination of darker browns for the eyes, and I'll layer that with some lighter browns and yellows to get some variation in the iris. With pastel pencils, it's easy to lay lighter colors over darker colors. I like to lay down a base color and then slowly add details on top of it. On this drawing, I started out laying in the darker colors as the base, then working lighter colors on top. But I soon found that this way, with this color of pastel mat, it, it wasn't really working the way that I wanted to. You'll see me switch the way I'm working midway through this puppy to lay down my lighter colors first, then the darker details and shading on top of it. Don't be afraid to change up what you're doing in the middle of the drawing. If something isn't working, try something else and see how you end up liking it. This is the only way you can really learn how to problem solve in art. My tried and true method of laying down my darker pencils first and then my lighter pencils on top of it for pastels did not work with this color of pastel mat. So I had to switch up the way that I was doing things. Don't be afraid to do that. You'll learn something new every time. So here I'm laying down my lighter colors first and I'm coming back on top with various browns and tans to make the strands of fur. I'm paying, paying close attention to the direction in which I'm making the pencil marks. If the fur curves to the left or to the right, I want to make sure I'm moving my pencil in the same direction and with the same length of pencil stroke. If I don't do this, then the fur is not going to look realistic. While I'm working, I'm constantly looking at my reference photo to make sure that my values match the reference photo. I'm spending more time looking at my reference than I am looking at my drawing. I want my darks to be dark enough and the lights to be light enough. With pastel matte paper, it's really easy to make adjustments in either color or value multiple times to get things to look the way you want them to, so don't be afraid to make changes as you go along. You'll see in this area I'm lighting down my layer color, lighter colors first, and then I'm coming on top with my mid-range browns and I'm laying on top some darker values and then some lighter values to make it look the way I want it to. When it comes to this puppy's ear, I'm paying very close attention to how the different hairs and strands of fur move this way and that way, though I'm not following the reference photo exactly. Every strand doesn't need to be in the same place, but you do have to get it close to where the photo is in order for it to look realistic. Now here you can see I've laid in my darker areas first to help me keep track of where all the lines go in this ear. So I lay in those darks first, then I come in through with a layer of lighter colors and move in with a range of mid-tone colors to make everything kind of blend together. Again, I'm playing, paying close attention to which way those strands of hair are moving. So I don't have to be exact, I do have to be close. And also values matter more in this area than your exact colors do. You can use whatever colors you want, just as long as the values are correct, you'll get a more accurate representation of what you're trying to do. Thank you. 
And you'll see me rework this area underneath the nose several times to get it as dark as I wanted it to. Um, I was having a problem with this shade of pastel matte where I couldn't get anything to look as dark as I wanted it to. So you'll see me come in there and rework it several times. Starting with the nose, I go back to laying in my darker colors first and I come on top with lighter values. I started out with my black pencil, then I laid in some different cool grays and actually some blues on top to create the lighter areas. I'm going to keep working and reworking this until it looks the way that I want it to. And it's going to take some time to get all the details in to make it look more realistic. Don't be afraid to keep reworking it until it looks the way you want it to. So right now I'm just getting in what I call the block in and I'll come back to this later when I get more of the dog done and I'll rework it so that it looks like it works more cohesively with this dog. So I'm continuing on with the rest of the fur like I did on the other side of the dog's face. I'm paying close attention to the direction and the length of the fur strands. I'm using the same colors that I've used before. Laying in my lighter colors first, coming in with some darker areas and a mid-tone to blend everything together. I'm blocking in the other eye now using some of the same colors that I used in the previous eye. These are dark browns, blacks, yellows, oranges, um, different colors for the iris. For the actual white of the eye, you'll notice that I don't actually use a white pencil. I'm using a combination of grays to get the shadowy look on the eyeball and to give it a rounded look. You'll notice that the shine on the eye isn't quite white as well. It's more of those cool grays that I use for other parts of the drawing. You want to save your whites for the absolute lightest parts of the portrait, like the highlight in the other eye, which is in the light. I don't want both eyes to have the same degree of brightness in the highlight on this drawing because one side of the puppy's face in this drawing is more in shadow than the other. If you put them both the same brightness, it's going to look like the light is coming at the dog from straight on while all the other lighting in the drawing doesn't appear this way and it's not going to look right. So one thing that I actually noticed on this particular shade of pastel matte is that your black pencils aren't going to really show as black. They come out more as like a dark gray. You'll see me using a black Prismacolor New Pastel for the darkest areas. It's, this shows up a lot better than the black pastel pencils. And that's not true for every shade of pastel matte. Um, for some of the lighter shades of pastel matte, I found that the black pencils actually show up as a lot darker than they do in this one. As I move on in the drawing, I keep adjusting my values and the shading of the fur. I'm being careful to make the fur look like it's soft. I'm using gentle pressure as I run the pencil over the previous marks that I've already drawn to soften everything out. If I use a lot of pressure, I'm going to get much harsher lines, and that's not what I'm aiming for in this portrait. So instead, I'm laying down a base layer. I'm laying in some different colored lines to get the different strands of fur going in the right direction and then I'm using a mid-tone pencil to soften everything out. I'm using gentle pressure as I run over it to get that nice soft look. The paper underneath my hand that you see is tracing paper. I use this underneath my hand so that I don't inadvertently smudge the drawing as I'm drawing it. I have a couple pieces of tape that are on the right hand side of that paper that you can't see um, that hold it to my drawing board. And I keep that underneath my hand at all times so that I can have a place to rest my hand and I don't smudge everything. You can also use a paper such as glassine for this purpose or you can use any other kind of paper that you have on hand. 
I like the tracing paper because it's fairly easy to see through what I'm doing and it's pretty cheap as far as papers go. When I get to the dog's ear, I'm paying very close attention to the direction of the fur and how I'm moving my pencil. I'm drawing in the darker areas first since this helps me keep track of the clumps of fur in the ear. I'm then going to come through with my lighter colors and use a mid-tone color to blend as I have in the past. You'll notice that I use my pencils to blend more than my fingers because if when I use my fingers everything ends up smudged together. And a lot of this is just trial and error. Don't let it you know, stop you from trying because it, it does look complicated, it does look difficult, but draw in those darker strands first lay in a middle tone color, put in your highlights on top, and use those pencils to blend everything together. Pay close attention to where all the strands of the hair are and take your time with it and it's going to end up look the way, looking the way you want it to. And if it doesn't end up looking the way you want it to, just keep trying. That's the only way you're going to learn. A lot about a lot of times like being an artist is just trial and error. So when I'm working on the dog's paw, this looks very intimidating to start. There's a lot of different strands of fur, they're all going different directions. So I'm breaking it down into one little clump at a time. I'm breaking this up into one little clump so I don't get overwhelmed with all the different directions the fur is going. And I'm using the same strategies that I've used for the rest of the paw, or the rest of the dog. Laying in the darker areas first, coming in with that mid-tone, laying on some lighter strands on top, and using the pencils to blend everything together. You can see the dog's uh, nails or claws on the bottom there. I used uh, black mixed with browns and smudged that together with whatever colors that were around it to make it look a little more cohesive. And like I said before, just take your time with this. This kind of thing, it looks so overwhelming at first, but if you break it down into little sections and do one little piece at a time, it's really not that bad. Now the background of this drawing is a blanket. It was much more complicated in the photo reference that I had, which I believe was from Paint My Photo. I wanted to simplify it so it didn't take attention away from the main subject of the drawing, which is the puppy in this case. So I chose a blue that matched the collar in the, the original photo. I'm using mainly soft pastels for this area. Um, I believe there's some Unisons, some Rembrandt, some Artist uh, Blick Soft Pastels. I chose three or four different values of blue and tested them on a scrap piece of paper first to make sure they looked okay when they were blended together. When you're drawing something like this, like a blanket, the most important thing to think of is that the blanket is a bunch of abstract shapes. I'm looking at where my lights are and where my darks are in order to get the folds of the blanket to look more realistic. I'm not thinking of it as a blanket in itself. You'll see for pastels, it's a lot easier to lay in your darker areas first and lay in your mid-range or your light values on top of that. I'm using my fingers to blend for the blanket part of the background. Now, if you don't have the same brands of pastels that I mentioned, that's okay. As long as you have different colors, different values that are going to work with your drawing, that's what matters. It doesn't have to be the exact same. Just keep working it until it looks the way you want it to. I worked and reworked some of the areas of this blanket many times before it looked like the photo and looked how I wanted it to. 
You want to make sure you have some darker values underneath where the puppy itself lies because that's the shadow of the puppy on the blanket. Now for the rest of the background, I tried to make it look similar to what was in the photo, which was a sofa. Um, so I used various browns and grays and soft pastels and I blended with my fingers to make it kind of a blurred sofa background. I didn't want any part of the sofa to be in focus as that would bring it forward and throw off the perspective of the drawing. Well, that wraps up this drawing. I had a lot of fun with this one. I hope you were able to learn something from it. Please remember to like this video and subscribe if you want these videos to keep on coming. Thank you.